with this bumper off, I was able to get in here and finish cleaning up the last bit of the frame. Once that was done, I spent a decent amount of time getting these templates made up so that they fit well. So this is going to be the outside cap. With this removed, you can see I have an inside backing plate. That's going to cover up this thin area where that shock mount had rusted through. Then I'm also going to have a top and bottom rail because I wanted to do something here anyway. So this piece is essentially the same. I can just cut two strips and I can attach one on top and bottom. Even though the top is still plenty thick, there's really not a lot of wear up here at all. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it's under the bed. And while I'm in there, might as well add that extra bit of, of strength. And then when all those pieces are done, I'll come back and cap this. So it'll be back piece, top and bottom. We'll get that stitched in and then capped off. And this will be all secure. Also, we're going to have it kind of cut in back on itself. That's going to give me room to get in here and attach the hardware for the rear bumper and bracing when it goes back together. It's going to be really hard if I box it all the way to the end. I could have some captive nuts in there, but I think I'm just going to leave this part open. Uh, I think it'll be it'll still be plenty strong. The other thing with this is, this is kind of like how people have hung supports over the existing rusty frame. The only thing I don't like about that is you don't have, you haven't cleaned anything on the inside. So you're just welding over other rusty metal and that's just going to rust out even more and it's not going to last as long as cutting this open, cleaning it out, inside and out, and then boxing it. And then of course I'm still going to come in here and I'm going to coat the whole inside of this frame and outside of this frame when I'm done. My templates to cut these out with the plasma cutter. These are the outside frame caps for boxing it in. These are the inside reinforcements. And then these strips I actually had the metal supplier shear them for me because they're just long straight strips. It's easier just to have that done. I got a clean edge that's just that much faster for me to work with. Obviously you know, I couldn't shear all these angles and stuff so um, these are going to get matched up to the template and ground so that they they're going to fit just how I want them. So do that next and then I can start assembling all these pieces out of the truck frame. Before I weld in these inner plates, I want to show how much these frames can move around, especially when they've been, you know, they're rusted and they've been cut and ground open like this because there's a lot less support in here. Obviously there's weaker areas, but it's important to be mindful when doing this stuff and take small steps. If you cut too much out at once, things can really move around on you. So right now you can see I have this dial indicator kind of crudely sitting on the frame and it's touching this point where I can see a lot of movement. Now the frame is sitting on the factory lift points on the frame, just on jack stands. In the front it's sitting on the tires on its own weight. So these rear tires can freely move. It's just a little off the ground the whole back of this truck is hanging on it under its own weight. Now if you watch this indicator, I'm going to lean on it just a little bit. And you can see how much that's moved. And if I lift up, take some weight up on the back, let's see how much it moves that way as well. You could probably see the frame itself is kind of tweaking in and out. So that's why I've been doing this in small steps, not cutting too much out and trying to be, you know, 
uh, careful on how I attack each step along the way, which is why I'm going to first do this inside plate and also support the frame best I can so that it's not going to move when I start welding these in. I cut that cancerous rust back so that most of all that pitting is gone. I'm back to thick steel on both sides. This was that troubled area that was hiding behind the shock box. And I've made a template. It has some nice curves in it all the way around. So this is already prepped for later. I'm going to make a fill patch. This is my inside plate for this side. As you can see, I've already got all the holes drilled in it. Those are my little spot weld holes that I've been doing. This is going to give me more contact points to attach this to the existing frame. I'm going to get this in here and clamp down so that I can start tacking it in place. And then I can go around the edges and stitch it in, adding all the strength back that I'm lacking now. This inside plate has been fully welded. I started by doing all the tacks and the spot welds. And then I went around and just kind of stitched different areas so that this plate is uh, fully attached. Now it's time to move on to the lower rail. So this is one of the strips that I whittled out. It looks a little bit like a puzzle piece <laughs> because this is going to interlock between where I had stitched the previous panel. So that's going to be, you know, one, step two, and then the top will be the final. There's also some spot weld holes here. And then there is a little bit of a bend that I had massaged into there. And this is going to line up nicely in here, get clamped in place so that I can attach it. Originally, I was thinking about maybe cutting a whole section of this out and then trying to double it up and back it up and then like overlay multiple strips across this area and I just don't need to do that. I'm going to just have this fully boxed with this overlay. I also took a minute to kind of straighten out any of this frame rail because this one's a bit weaker than the other side. The other side's in pretty good shape compared to this because of this whole situation around this thin rusty area. So I just took one of my squares and I went through and massaged everything with a hammer <laughs> and I got everything looking pretty nice. I'm happy with the whole layout here. It's looking good. I'm going to start clamping this and welding it in place. Time for some JB Tech. I 
I've got the left hand side of that frame all welded up, reinforced, I'm done with it. Before I move on to the right hand side, I want to talk about one more thing that I ran into with this frame. And that's the fact that there's a little bit of a bend going on back here. So quick backstory, when I bought this truck, I noticed that the box was sitting just a little tilted, not a lot. I was probably the only one that even noticed it because it's my truck. But I figured it probably had something to do with the old worn out suspension. So when I put all the new parts in, it did get better, but it didn't go away completely. Now that the frame has been, you know, I'm working on it, I got it all cleaned up. I've been able to take a better look at it back here. And I've noticed that this frame actually is bending up a little bit. Now, first gen Tacoma owners have had this problem. I've, I've seen other people complain about it, especially if they've been using them off-road on trails and stuff. It takes a lot of abuse on the frame and they just kind of start to bend up. There's quite a few companies out there that offer reinforcing plates that you can attach to the outside of the frame to try to uh, stiffen it so it doesn't do that. You know, mine's a little bit more severe because uh, the truck has got some rust issues back here, but also a lot of miles on it. Um, that side, as I put these plates in, I was able to um, bend it down and straighten it out and, and actually it as I clamped and welded that on there I got that framework really straight so now I got to do something with this side because once I start putting the reinforcements over here and boxing it in it's, it's not going to move it's going to be really uh, rigid so the truck is sitting on flat pads I went around with my laser tripod and I shimmed the floor up so that my truck is sitting perfectly flat all the tires are air to spec this truck is sitting as level as I can get it and I want to show with my laser now uh, the differences that I that I found in the rails this laser line is going right down the center of these um, rear bumper and trailer hitch holes this these holes are actually right in the center of the frame rail so if you look at the other side though, the right hand side, you'll notice that these holes are about three quarters of an inch higher. And the same goes for my measurements to the floor. It's, this rail is, is bending upwards three quarters of an inch. Uh, one other thing that I can show is, turn this off. Look at these shackles. See how this one is mostly straight up and down? If we look at the other side, you can see it's pulling uh, more towards the front of the truck. So because of that rail is being is pushed up some. So I gotta try to straighten that out. So I've got this half of the frame jacked up off the ground enough just to give a little distance between the tire. So I got some room to flex this thing. I put a jack stand under it. What I'd like to do is Take a rough measurement here, 38 and 3 eighths, because what I do know is I want to be able to bend this down, maybe even over bend it, because it's probably going to spring back some. What I did is ordered one of these factory Toyota frame adjusting tools, so shipping was a killer, but it's a pretty big piece. It's designed to go right here inside the frame. And since I know that it's bent, this, this section here is bent upwards, I'm basically just gonna try to reverse that. I wanna try to bend this down. So using this specialty tool, I'm gonna start leaning on it, right? To see if I can get this to come down. And then we'll take a measurement and see if it's actually doing anything. Okay, 38 and 3 eighths. Ah, 38 and 8. It moved. Well, that's good. Let's try it again. Suspension a little jolt since I had it jacked up. Just gonna try to bounce the truck a bit and get it to settle. Okay. I'm gonna turn my laser back on. 
get it centered on the hole right about there, centered on this side. Come over here, I already see it's a lot better. It's not bad at all now. I'm measuring from center. We're off maybe an eighth inch, considering all the variables. That's far improved. I'm much, I'm much happier with that. I'm going to um, double check the straightness. I already took my square and my mini sledge. I just kind of straighten the frame rails to make sure that they're square. But yeah, from here now, I'll be able to weld those plates in. And if it's anything like the left hand side, as I clamped and tacked this in place, it kind of naturally started to straighten itself out even more. So I can get along and do that side next. plates welded in they turn out sweet I'm really happy with this there is hardly any flex back here like it had before I got thickness back in the frame um, the other issue I had was that this rail was bending up slightly and after I had straightened it it still needed just a little bit of uh, work but as I clamped this down and welded it in it straightened out even more I used my laser and a straight edge. I checked several points across the back of the truck and this thing's really close to being level now all around. So I'm happy with that. I just need to do a little bit of touch up on some of these spot welds just to grind them down a little bit. I had uh, good penetration everywhere. Everything looks really nice and clean. I just wanna get any little bits of spatter out of there because um, I'm gonna come back and coat this. So. I want to get that cleaned out first before I cap it and then I will work on the frame caps. They are cut and ground fairly close but they're going to need just a little bit of work to get them to fit just right so I can come back here and get that nice overlap area for the weld to fill it in and then I can get this back half of the truck buttoned up.
There it is. I made that bending die real quick for my hydraulic uh, press over there. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I know you could buy a lot of kits, but I whipped that together with some scrap steel I had and it bent this eighth plate like no problem at all. My angles matched up really well to my template. So now this thing is just needs a little bit of fitment in here and then I can start clamping and welding this in place. side I got it all welded in it's nice and solid it turned out great I do want to go back and and grind these welds on a little bit but there was a nice fillet radius there to fill in for the weld so it should come out really nice when it's all ground down and then back here is where it bends in to kind of cap off this box section I bent that in so that I had a little relief right here for the trailer hitch mounts and then of course earlier I welded in the uh, captive nut so because that was behind a spot where um, I couldn't get to and I didn't want to drill a hole for access there anyway. So that's done. I got to do the same on this side. So what I'll do is get that other plate ground and fit and then I'll have to use that new press brake that I made just to kind of bend those angles in so that I can get that on next. And then when that's done, the back half of this truck, the frame rails at least, will be complete.
ta freaking da the truck is back in the garage i was able to get all that grinding done outside today it was warm enough keep all that grinding grit out there and clean this whole garage out so as you can see the frame rails have been cleaned up with the grinder took a flat wheel over everything turned out really nice there wasn't a lot of grinding to do because i left myself a nice uh fit up in that where i had a channel little fillet area that i could put a weld in all the way down so there's a lot of weld in here secure in these cover plates you can see they look pretty nice that's again the relief area for the trailer hitch i'm just going to swing around you can see in here that's the captive nut and this is where all the all the plates kind of merge together that slotted hole um let's see i do need to go back over here i left myself just a little bit of a witness mark where that butt joint is being a box frame i don't think it's as critical to have a fish plate there but i do plan to come back and make a fish plate for the joints on that side there and this side over here that needs to get done as well i think that'll be my final frame modification but really the the rails being reinforced and boxed in was the big deal it's quite the undertaking but it's done happy with it really happy with it um one more thing let's back up here i set my tripod up one more time because previously i had shown this I used this laser to help me kind of blueprint the frame and kind of and check several points back here to see how things were lining up. The truck is parked on its leveling pads again. And as you can see, this is lined up in the center of that uh, hole, the left hand rail. If you look over here now, the right hand rail is smack center as well. So everything kind of pulled back into place after I tweaked it and tacked it in really happy it's about as good as it's going to get for an old truck so this truck bed's going to sit nice and level now in the next video i'm going to have to do a few more things obviously back here it's not done i need to come up with a way to mount the fuel tank cross member so that's about where that brace is right now so once i get that back in i can remove that brace get the fuel tank back in here i'll be able to drive this thing again um, and then further back here, of course, I got to get the spare tire carrier in. That's when that gets back in here, I'll remove these other braces that are holding the rear rails out. Um, the spare tire carrier used to bolt into the frame, and now it can't do that, so I'll have to come up with something. Also, the shock mounts. I have to, I know where they need to be. I just got to come up with a way to mount those back on there. And then the only other repair I can think to do is this bed mount right here. It's all rusty and there's not a lot of strength left in it. At this point, I'm going to cut it off and I'll make a new one. The other side looks great. It's just right here. So that'll be in the coming video. But that's a wrap. This was a pretty big undertaking and it's done.